Welcome to Private Club Radio, your weekly source for industry education, news and discussion. Broadcasting from Tampa, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, here is your host, Gabriel Aloisi. Hey, welcome to Private Club Radio, episode 108. It's a pleasure to have you here once again with me. We're going to be talking about a country club today, but a country club that is not in a physical location. So think about it. Does a club need four walls and a building? Or could it be online? We're going to be speaking with Brad Rudover, who is the founder of Country Club X. And what his app does is actually connect club members across the country and even across the world with each other so that they can have their own golf games together. Kind of cool. I was interested about it when I heard it. And here on Private Club Radio, we explore all subjects. And I thought we could talk about this one today. So welcome my guest to the show, Brad from Country Club X. Brad, welcome to Private Club Radio. Well, thank you for having me, Gabe. It's an absolute pleasure. I came across your concept on LinkedIn. I thought it was pretty unique. So I'd love for you to give folks a 40,000 foot view about what Country Club X is all about, Brad. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm, again, I'm, I'm glad that we connected, Gabe. Um, so the overall idea is that Country Club X connects country club members with one another so that they can golf at and experience the various amenities of other country clubs, not only their club. So it's a peer-to-peer network where you can travel and actually play some golf with some like-minded people out there, it sounds like. You're absolutely right. And so like, uh, you know, it's, it's up to uh, the user to create whatever profile they want. And we, we really have very limited required fields. One is, is your country club. Another is your name. And we would like you to have your handicap on there as well so that we know, you know, are we connecting with similar handicaps? Of course, you know, if you, if you have professional affiliation, that would be ideal as well. So that, you know, when you're looking at the member directory, you're you're understanding who you're connecting with. And you may want to give them the choice between two members. If you see a member that shares more interests than you and a similar handicap to yours, uh, you may want to uh, consider joining them for a round of golf. Sure. Now you've kind of, you've, you've built this with a win-win mindset. And so it's a kind of a win for the country club itself and it's a win for the member. Can you take us through how that works? Yeah, and, and absolutely, Gabe. Uh, that, that's kind of the, the whole idea process. I said, you know, um, how, how can everyone be happy with this uh, project? You know, and uh, the overall idea was, well, I bring guests to my country club and, you know, I either take care of their green fee or they pay for their green fee. Um, I then either treat them to lunch or dinner or they pay, you know, later, you know, uh, the idea is that I'm going to bring a guest anyway. And so, um, you know, what this allows people to do is meet new people. Um, and I guess in our case, let's say, you know, I wanted to come golf in Florida, you know, I, I now know you, uh, you would have me as your guest. Uh, so, you know, it, it really benefits the club in the way that, Uh, You're getting certainly a green fee that you may have not recognized had it not been for Country Club X. On top of that green fee, you're probably going to see some merchandise sales, Um, you know, maybe a golf shirt, golf hat, who knows what else uh, people would buy. Certainly food and beverage, for sure. So, I mean, if you think about it, you know, let's just say $500 is an easy number to come up with, uh, you know, that the club would benefit. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I guess the way I see it happening pretty well is, you know, if I'm a business traveler, I'm going out into another state, I want to play some golf and I don't want to play at a public course, I want to play at a private course. This gives me the opportunity to connect with someone on your platform and make that happen. Am I understanding that correctly? Gabe, you hit the nail on the head. And that was the overall idea is that, hey, I, I enjoy golfing. Uh, and I think you do as well. And most country club members enjoy golfing at any club possible, right? So I think we've all played 
public courses. We've all played private courses as well. You know, given the option, I think most would choose a private club due to various factors, such as green speeds, you know, um, overall course condition um, challenges. Uh, you know, there, there's, a, I think, a laundry list, right? And so having the ability to not only play a private club, but you have to take it a step further that you're playing a private club with a member of that club. So you have to really think of that right there. What I just said is that, so when you're playing a public course for the first time, well, and you're not playing with a member, you don't even know that course, you know, no one's telling you, Oh, aim to the right of that tree. So when you actually go to a private course and you're playing with a member of that course, they're going to act as your guide. Uh, like, I, I mean, you're, you're not losing strokes due to uh, your lack of course knowledge. You're, you're with a member that definitely knows that course in and out. So I, I think there, there's just so many benefits here that, that, uh, you know, this, this is uh, something I think everyone will really enjoy. Sure. Now I can imagine there's got to be some club managers out there or some uh, private club members who said, well, we don't want a bunch of guests coming to our course. What would you say to that, Brad? And, and I completely understand. Um, you know, I, I think every club has uh, a form of a guest policy. Maybe, maybe some courses don't want any guests whatsoever. Um, but I would venture to say that almost every course has a guest policy. So uh, as long as you're within that guest policy, uh, there should be absolutely no problem with this. I don't know a club that would say or a board of directors that would say they don't want additional revenue um we're not suggesting that we're taking away uh tea time from one of the members we're playing within the the rules of the the guest policy um you know but again that's okay that's okay um you know if if they say look we don't want any country club x people that's fine you know what i'm looking to accomplish is that you know just letting however many people choose to use this service. I'm not looking to have every single club in the world using the service. Certainly not. Nor am I looking for every single member from every single club to use this service. You know, our, our community is growing, you know, at a steady pace right now. And I think people are, are appreciating it. So, um, you know, it, it, should there be a club that doesn't, like it that's that's okay uh, that's that's not a problem at all yeah now you know that is a point of differentiation i think we should make is that you do need to be a, a club member to join country club x is that correct yeah that, that's that's kind of the critical component to this gabe is uh, that um you know you're you're a club member so essentially what i'm doing is um providing a benefit to being a club member other than just being able to golf and enjoy your course or your country club, uh, you know, so um, it, it's adding value, as I say, to a club membership. Yeah. I think that's nice because it's almost a reciprocal program for all clubs. <laughs> so it kind of makes it cool. You can go out and play some new places and actually meet people that are like-minded, like you mentioned. Well, and, and you know, I think, you just mentioned something that's that's very critical to the the development of this project was the reciprocal process, and um, I, I I think most people will agree that it is quite challenging process, and um, you know typically the the tea times that you receive through the process are uh, you know uh, a weekday afternoon, like say like a Tuesday at two thirty. <laughs> You know, and, 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 you know, hey, yeah, sure, you're, you're getting to play another course for free, which is cool, as, as long as they're reciprocal. But, you know, that's a, that's a tough time to play. You know, I think most people are um, working or they have other commitments. They don't want to be late for dinner. Um, so that's a challenge, you know, whereas when you play as a member's guest, uh, you know, as long as you're within the 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 guest policy of the club. I mean, you, you can typically pay, play it, you know, in the morning, certainly. Um, it may not be on a Saturday morning, but it certainly can be a morning round. So, uh, so yeah, eh, you know, that's, that's kind of my, my take on it. Yeah. Well, oh, that's a good one. Now, 
what kind of spawned this idea for you? I know you're actually a member of a private club yourself and you wanted to just do some traveling. Can you take us through the process and what it's been like to build out this technology? And do you have a tech background? Uh, very good questions, Gabe. Um, so I'll, I'll hit on the, the, the tech background first. Um, so uh, yes, I certainly do have a technology background. Um, I Back in the the late nineties, I was able to, uh, you know, bring a dot com company public with a group of investors. So I, I really had a, a great time doing that. I learned so much and, uh, you know, I, I really started, um, appreciating what the power of the internet can do is, um, you know, connecting just random people. I, I was very impressed with it. So, uh, you know, I've had a variety of different, uh, you know, I call them projects, you know, this is, uh, you know, um, definitely a hobby for me uh, to do these type of projects. And the overall idea is to, you know, it's a utilitarianism type of idea that, you know, I'm just trying to help everybody out here um, with this project. And so, uh, you know, it, it's exciting that this is, this is one that's actually uh, really working and people are enjoying it. Um, so I think the other part of your question was, uh, you know, about, you know, why I came up with the concept. And, uh, so I mentioned a little bit about the reciprocal process. Uh, you know, when I first joined, uh, Richmond country club, I, I wanted to play a, a course down in Oregon. Uh, you know, I put in the ballot request and, you know, I wanted to play on a Saturday morning because I happened to be dra- traveling down there on the weekend. And sure enough, I was rejected. And, and they said, well, they don't allow, you know, reciprocals on the weekend. And so a- after that, I just, I never put in a reciprocal. Um, and I, I just never did. So that kind of frustrated me. And so I, you know, I certainly have friends that are members of other clubs uh, up and down the West Coast. So who, whenever I want to play another club, I just call them and I say, Hey, you know, I'd like to come golf with you. And so I just pay for my round. I'm, I'm fine with that. You know, I don't necessarily need a, a free round of golf. Hey, it's, it's great, but I'm happy paying to play a course that I really want to play. Um, so that's the, the one component. The other component is that, um, you know, out of all the members at my club, I, I can't say that I know everyone. I, I really can't. And I mean, considering that it's such a small community, that's, I don't know. I don't think that's great. Maybe that's part my fault. Maybe it's just that we don't have enough connection. Uh, I know that we have a member directory that they typically, uh, they used to send out a little booklet with, you know, all the members names and, uh, you know, it really was kind of useless almost um, because it just had the person's name and home phone number. I don't know anybody that has a home phone number anymore. <laughs> right. So, so that's the other part is that like our community is kind of disconnected. So I thought that, okay, well, you know, if all of my, the members of my club were on here, I could start getting to know them more by seeing kind of what they do and we can maybe exchange some messages together. Um, so I thought that was, one part of it that, you know, could happen. And certainly guess what? Most of the members that signed up early were from my club, which is very cool to have that sort of support. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm getting to know more about my members and I certainly hope that they're getting to know more about each other. Uh, so I I think from that standpoint, it's working. Uh, and, and then, you know, another part of this development process was, um, you know, to further connect the community by um, uh, providing a, a, a marketplace so that they can exchange goods and services. Um, so it, again, it's it's this is only for club members. So um, let's say you know I, I have a 56 degree wedge that you know is just sitting in my garage. I can put it on uh, the marketplace, and maybe another member will trade me you know, for a set of tickets to a hockey game or something like that. You know, you just gave away your Canadian heritage 
by saying a hockey game. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, Gabe, it is snowing here and I'm looking at about three inches of snow outside. So I'm certainly not golfing today. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's kind of it in a nutshell is like, that's why the, uh, the, the three points that I, that I bring up on, on the website are networking marketplace and golf experiences. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's right. Um, the Country Club X website is just like it sounds, countryclubx.com. So I definitely recommend people check that out. Brad, the other interesting thing that I found about your platform is it's it you you have a very altruistic approach here. You're not you're not charging people to join this thing, and you, you actually have no real uh, monetization going on with this right now. Why have you chosen to go that route? Well, and. and- and Gabe, again, um, you keep bringing up the perfect words. Uh, so altruistic is certainly uh, something that I hold dearly to my heart. And I think that, um, you know, I mentioned earlier that I owe uh, my career, you know, at least partly to golf. And uh, this is kind of my labor of love to give back to the golf community. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, you know, everyone asks me, you know, what, what is this thing going to do in terms of revenue? And I, I just say, look, it's not about the revenue. Um, hey, I'm not saying that it wouldn't be great if my costs were covered. I, I certainly have some costs to run a website for sure. Um, and, you know, that would be great. But you know what? I'm, I'm not expecting anything. So uh, I just hope that people enjoy the technology and, and they find it useful. Yeah. Well, Brad, thanks so much for joining us here. Again, want to remind everyone, check out countryclubx.com and have a look at what Brad and his folks are doing over there. Brad, thanks again for being on Private Club Radio. Thank you so much, Gabe. I really do appreciate it. Well, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Private Club Radio. Thanks for joining me here once again. And I hope to catch you back here next week for another chat. Until then, here's to your membership success. Private Club Radio is brought to you by Concert Golf Partners, helping to preserve and enhance private golf and country clubs. Concert Golf has the capital, expertise and private club hospitality experience to help upscale private clubs achieving long-term success and membership growth. For 25 years, Concert Golf has allowed private club members to focus on simply enjoying their club. Visit ConcertGolfPartners.com to learn more about the recapitalization process.